Hello and welcome to my coding session. This is all about writing Bucket Manager. This is a user for Java FX application for managing XML files which consist of satellite channels information. And uh, last time I ended my session uh, thinking about how to write my XML objects to actual XML files. And it took a while. I did take the camera off and let me just quickly show you my result. I did written my result using TDD. So I created package file util list and I created my tests like here. And let me just quickly go to resources. Oh, I don't need this. Um, folder I can delete it yes I can delete it without any hesitation so basically what will happen and what was interesting let me just quickly open file writer here file details this is actual implementation now <coughs> <coughs> the funny thing you all about of this sorry for the previous stuff and um, I need to do following. Hmm. I need a temporary uh, folder which will be deleted and created after running each of my unit tests. And <coughs> sorry. And uh, what is was what was done? So y you see clearly here that I'm running setup uh, before each of my tests and after that I'm deleting it was, it was quite a little challenge little challenge because you can actually delete folder in Java with many variations because you have implementation in Java 7 Java 8 and so on and so on so basically I am using the way which I found the most suitable for me and you, you see clearly here that I'm executing delete directory method. And here it goes like this. So in Java you need to check if you if your directory which you want to delete is exist and you need to verify that it is a directory actually, not a file. After that you need to actually empty the directory first here I'm doing the empty I'm deleting the files which are in the given directory which you need to delete and after executing this method uh, I can actually delete my directory this is how in Java it works and creation of directory is simple too let me just quickly go open and so basically here I need I have some stuff which I need to read and to create Java objects for that and for the create directory so create directory is simple too uh, I get the input path to the place where I need to create the directory I'm making sure that the directory is existing exists and I need to make sure that is that is actually a directory, not a file. And only after that I can create a directory. Pretty simple. And this is all, this is actually what was interesting to write because you have so many ways to do that. So many ways. And let's just go actually about test cases which I have created. So. The purpose of this test unit is to test if I can actually create a f XML file from the given XML object, Java object. And first of all I need to verify that I can create the writer object which writes a file. And you see it's passing, let me just put it down and do it like this. Yeah. So then 
I need to find out if file bucket does exist because if it does exist it should return false I mean it should return if, if it does exist it should return uh, true so I expect that the file was actually created let's just let's just uh, do the testing so the file is here so resources uh, let me just update it yeah you see the file was created and the test did pass now I delete it and once again I should mention I always create a folder run test then delete the folder after the test each of the unit tests next test so here I'm testing if I create a special type of the file which is a satellite now let's just check it and let's just for convenience reasons look up yep and you see I have here satellites information file and this I am getting from my Java objects model objects and for services it is the same stuff testing key file can be created for buckets so I'm making sure that I can create all of my files which I need as a result of running my application uh, some interesting case that I have thought of uh, what happens if I already have the files in the given directory and the user wants to overwrite so I did include such method and that's it for this test case so when I run all of my tests not, nothing should fail and I can proceed to the next part of my project all works pretty well this is already on github so if you want to hack and look up my code you can do it next on my agenda so now finally I can think about working with my prime with my JavaFX stuff but before I do that let me just I think I should draw something so now I have my model I'll basically do stuff like this and I just write here model the model consists of three things it consists of satellites I will use short name like set set info set info then I have buckets info and I have my services info well this is what I have done through all of my project and the next the next step is to create a Java FX part I will say it like a layer and I will just right here Java FX layer Java FX layer you will see later my MVC model in the full content, but let me just uh, click quickly. Uh, okay, let me just quickly fix my typo. Yeah. So now I have all of my stuff structured, and I can begin the communication between between two. I see it. I see it like la la layers. Yeah. Mm. 
my Java FX layer will consist of controllers and it will consist of view and so controller view and of course I will have main class but main class is just to yeah to put it on the screen and basically I need to figure it out things like internationalization so basically basically I need to be able to have here uh, let me just write another thing internationalize nation probably spell it wrong but it is internalization yeah internationalization so my application will support many different kind of languages um, when I look up uh, the specification of my project did I specify it, which of languages I will can actually should be used in my project uh, target specification let's just look look it up and the specific uh, this specific, specification about test cases of uh, procedure model forecast okay so I'm looking through through my PDFs German Ukrainian Russian okay so and, and English by default and that means that the default language will be English and all other languages will be can be loaded separately through the user interactions with the program on the fly but English is per default it is integrated in my Java FX but all other languages uh, can be added through can be added can be added through the through the files like I, I think um, yeah I'm just thinking about how I will do it so basically maybe it will be like a class which will be called after some sort of a user interaction with UI and the controller corresponding controller for this interaction will load the class and will get the language which was chosen by the user interaction with UI so it basically consists let me just draw some line, red line. The way I will imagine it will access the internationalized class when it when it when it's needed, and otherwise it will use default. So default language is English. And if user, if user, if user did decided otherwise, he pick another language, and that means for me I need to load from this internationalization class a language, and this should then update my view layer view view class so why I'm thinking about this I did spend some time how to do it in more but best practices way and another pattern did establish I mean thought pattern did establish by me um, when I have this situation I need actually to be able to store to store uh, the 
preferences of the user. So basically, um, basically it would it, it should go like this. Preferences. And the program will be actually just reading, uh, reading user preferences. And if no preferences are, I mean, if the file preferences does not exist, and this should be determined by the user preferences class. Only, only in this case, the default should be load. It's clear separation of concern, I will say. Like, like this. So, I need to load my internationalization if I have such files. If not, I need to use my default. Default will be in the I mean, the internalization and user preferences files they are outside of my jar file. And actually, I need to determine if and how I need to create a jar file besides my besides my um, jar jar file. So. Java application starts, graphical user interface is established and after that I need to check if I, I, if I have my preferences file and if I have my language file. So basically the structure will be like following. Here is my structure. I have here my jar file. And besides jar, I have directory uh, link, which represents language files. And basically, this is directory. And besides my jar file, I have my preferences file. Okay. And not to forget, I need to be able to show my GNU GPL license. Why, you say? Because I need to make sure that user which use my application accepts the license by which I, with which I develop my um, application. So basically, the use case will be. Let me just look it up. Um, So it will basically works like this, user launched for the first time the application and after that I creating my preferences file and in the preferences file I will, I will write that I have, that the user did so the license agreement, if not show the license agreement first and then change in the file the variable basically basically like like this so maybe I will need some file YouTube class to do that but basically now it will start now, now it can be now it becomes very interesting the procedure so yeah, I am looking 
I'm looking on my users cases. So I have for my Java fix eight user use cases. One search for one concrete channel and choose a in favorite group one or more channels for deleting purposes. It will be interesting too. The user choose a one channel from for, from the general list for editing purposes. Purposes. So yeah, a lot a lot of work is needed to make my GUI very interesting. So okay, I need to do so user change the language of application. Let me I hope I can do this. So basically this is UML diagram on which I did look up and you see the procedure. Use a click on menu languages, uh, select one language, and I need to confirm the selection, and then I need to update my layout. Yeah, and then and basically I need to load properties from the language file. And yeah, so some things are. Many many stuff happens at the same time, but let's do it right. Let's just speak about Java FX, FX only. Let me just I need to make a screenshot. Oh, let me just click quickly make a screenshot. So okay, let's let just speak shortly about uh, the architecture. As you see, uh, typical typical Java FX uh, architecture consists of many kind of different frameworks. And let me just quickly take this picture and draw some things. Yeah, I think. Um, Uh, all right, so I need to. It belongs to the domain knowledge. So basically, Java FX, Java FX, and go to this. Okay. Does it load? Okay, now, now, from all of the things which I will use in my project, I don't need OpenGL, I don't use uh, Java 2D, maybe Dead 3D, no, because it is always things for the gaming engines. Uh, media engine, basically not, Wolf web engine, I don't know. JavaScript, I'm not sure I will use JavaScript. Prism, basically, I don't know as I will use this, prism, but definitely I will use this stuff. And of course, this stuff and Java Virtual Machine, so free stuff. And how, how a typical Java FX application still is layer? Well, let me just quickly think of it. Um, normally, in each Java application, you have uh, some sort of a root. This is quickly introduction in the Java FX. Java FX architecture. So you have here your root. So basically main main object in your Java FX application. And you have some leaves. And why it is so important? Because later if you have your UI with different kind of elements, it is good to know where it all belongs. 
so you have you have uh, here like leaves things like leaves roots so you have here node 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 and this is basically like scene scene can be structured and after that you have your so basically I need to draw differently let me just do it better so of, of course you have the, the most important object you have your stage on the stage you have your scene and let me just quickly draw it right stage here under the stage you have your scene and under the scene you have your root and let's show it and now I can yeah I can make it properly with a proper size let me just do it right so you have your stage scene let me just do it like this doesn't matter um, and then you have your root it is important to understand how UI is structured because later if you need some some kind of outlandish stuff uh, then you will able to manipulate then you will ab then you will be able to manipulate this stuff and root and under the root you have then parents and I just write parent pair and under the root you have many you can have many parent it can be uh, some layout boxes but uh, this layout boxes can consist some must consist some leaves so you you put your buttons, you put your control control boxes stuff and, and so on and so on. But but basically Java a typical Java FX application consists of a stage. On the stage you have your scene. On the scene you have all other elements. And this is how Java FX application structured. This is a main representation of typical JavaFX application well I need to add to this another stuff and this will be like thinking about less code more 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 presentation because some people are so they are writing out all of elements and this is mass mass code actually if you if you still in 2018 write like button Jeff JavaFX button and then set up all of the properties of the button um, basically doing this stuff wrong so what I'm actually fan of you have fxml format FXML format is uh, XML actually, which consists of information about what should be outputted to the screen, I will say, printed on the screen. So you can have a screen with some buttons, with some tables, and, and so on. And this is uh, all, all, the, all of the stuff which you can 
make not by coding but rather using some sort of a design application in my case I will use scene builder scene builder which funny thing was created by Oracle but after some time they open source it and now it belongs to some another company which do it like in open source actually Java uh, fix is not included in Java 9 as, as, as far as I know and maybe in some future we will have some different UI but I stick to the Java FX2 I mean to the current Java FX version but anyway what is FXML? FXML is not a programming language you see here I have the Oracle site and it describes it describes some sort of what you should have in your FXML if you want to if you want to use it and basically some at some point you should take care and edit some stuff in FXML through the not by the scene builder but through the notepad or some sort of a file editor uh, I will try to not to do that because I'm not big fan of XML I'm actually thinking about XML is too verbose and too difficult at some point to, to process but you can see clearly the stuff which you can do with FXML and if you want to if you want to know more about FXML you can go ahead and read it I will use it this information only on need to know basis and here you have another interesting example how you can create a simple FXML application I am actually let me show you and let me just quickly exactly so this is how I will structure my next application so basically I did some prototyping before I need to work on the actual production code now I think this is wrong this is, sorry this is wrong application this was the application which I am looking for this was an example. So, basically, how your application structure? You have for let me just you have your model, which is simple model class, and you have FXML in your view. And when I run with a scene builder, so this is this is how it looks like when you look it up with the editor but when you look it up with a scene builder it looks differently it takes some time to load the fxml on my machine and it looks like this you see it's a designer for UI of JavaFX with many functions I will know I will not go right now to the, all of the functionality this is you will see that later and this is basically what you get when you uh, written a JavaFX application And don't think that will work. No, it, wo it does not work because I using preview mode. But it is very fun. You can see how exactly what kind of elements and where it plays. You can manipulate some stuff. So let me just quickly run the application. First, I will show my code. Okay, so I load my FXML file using fxml loader uh, my pane is a layout object I put this layout object in the scene of JavaFX and then this scene is shown 
to the user. So basically it is what I have already said. I create my stage. I put on my stage the scene. And on the scene I put my layout. And this is how, how it works. Let me just run it. All of this data is loaded from the model class and now I can type some stuff and it is added to the presentation, to the view model. Um, I mean to the UI which you are actually seeing. And what to add? So basically this action which I have done, I click on the button and the input data was updated on the view UI model. And how it happens? So you you don't see this code in my main class because it is by the architectural decision of people who did create a Java fix. It was decided that you should use a controller because of the way how you because of the way how you should work with your mm, UI. So you have one fxml and I better just create some <coughs> some presentation of it so you have your fxml file this is what you have and from that you create an object and what why why it works why it works this is a very good question so here i have my fxml file fxml file and later i have my fxml object uh, i mean java object java object i was this simplified presentation but I think it is good one and then you have your controller so how it works you need to specify in your fxml file which controller will you use for the whole fxml file and it goes like this so fxml file you always need to specify your controller one controller per one fxml file currently this is how it works uh, in the main this basically happens all in the main you call fxml loader it loads fxml file and it produces javafx objects from which you can then work on but the interaction the data the, the work on the data done by the controller and this is how it's supposed to work you have your controller the controller access elements of the created F, uh, javafx objects and if you need to update some stuff it, it should always go through controller controller first the main class is only for loading the application the javafx application so it should be used only to start your javafx 
but the full work is on controllers which you create for the each of the each of the elements which you which you have in your project it can become some mess but it works so let me before I actually I know I'm bubbling through but this is very important to understand the architecture of Java fix before you actually can work on the project um, I have another example here which I have done it was another project which has uh, was not written by me but rather very interesting one so here I have basically another project it is not structured for me like um, I don't know the code is not structured pretty well um, but you see the idea it is all about idea what what is idea so here he in this project he loads a main view and puts the views from different FX, fxml in the view so he just put many java fix objects into one project uh, into object and start this object and this is basically a pretty simple java fx application let me just quickly run it this is basically simplified application and yeah you can type you can give yeah you see you saw some failures but it was not written by me it was like I use it like brainstorming for my project clear okay then one last part which I need to show you and this is uh, about internationalization I hope hope I did load right file ah, wrong file wrong. okay now I have uh, an example of how you can make your Java FX talk uh, different kind of languages take some time to load the application so it's basically an example project to to show you how it works so basically user select a language and I click start and you see mm, should be let me just go quickly when I select Saudi Arabian maybe yeah yeah it, it is not it was not written by me this application but it's rather an example that you can make your application on the like I say on the fly you can localize your application on the fly but it is important exercise for me because yeah now I can dig it in it more so basically I need to conclude this session it was an introduction session with Java fix and then I need to go to my project and start to write my first UI stuff I will not say that it will be, it will be beautiful by all means necessary I'm not a front-end guy 
but I have an idea and I have my I did first uh, mockups on my project here like this and this basically should be test driven done by the test drive so I, I think I it is well enough information for the first for the beginning I did some preparation for the Java FX part and that's it for this coding session and I hope you learn something and in the next part I will start to write my own UI so thank you and till then